raced ahead without New Zealand. But now some of our leading scientists, politicians and the Climate Commission want us to look at opening the door to some GMO advances. Finn Hogan has this report. In a leafy laboratory in central Auckland, these innocuous plants have extraordinary properties. So here we have some tamarillo plants that have been gene edited to make it about half the size it currently is. What we'd like is a nice small tamarillo plant that you could grow on your windowsill perhaps and have a tamarillo fresh every day. But for now, even if successful, it's going to be staying in here. Yep, this plant will never get further than a containment facility. Kept under lock and key because they're genetically modified. What do we want? Is it possible that the people of New Zealand may be offended? They were eating genetically modified corn. Widespread protests in the 90s and a royal commission in 2001 led to New Zealand adopting some of the most stringent genetic modification regulations in the world. We want to be GMO has got to go. In the 90s, there was a big push to introduce new genetically modified seeds, and people rightly said, we want proper regulation, we don't want to see this in our fields and in our paddocks, and how does it fit with our reputation for being a producer of uh, natural and safe food. But is being GMO free trapping us in the past? In light of new advances, the Climate Commission, the Productivity Commission, and the former Chief Science Advisor, Sir Peter Gluckman, have all called for our genetic modification laws to be reviewed. A conversation scientists like Rev would welcome. I struggle with not being able to have the impact for New Zealand that we all desperately want to have. We, we want to make New Zealand the best place to grow food, the most clean, the most green. The frustration of knowing that we have a route to make something better and being told, no, you mustn't. Told no by a 25-year-old law that restricts genetic modification to lab experiments and makes it very difficult to bring a modified product to market. If a scientist or business wants to take a genetically modified organism outside the lab, they must apply to the EPA. Until now, only one has been approved for unconditional release, a vaccine for horses. Back in the early um, 2000s, what we were talking about is we were actually taking bits of DNA from one organism and putting it in another organism that may not even be the same species. So back then it does feel very Frankenstein, it does feel very foreign and it feels very scary. Technology has moved on so far now. This is not the technology that we're using today. Modern gene editing techniques like CRISPR allow changes to genes that simulate those found in nature. The kinds of changes that gene editing make reflect almost exactly the natural processes of mutation in the environment. Mutation is a totally normal process. All of us are in fact mutants. Um, half of your DNA might have come from mum and half from dad, but there's a sprinkling of mutations in there that make you absolutely unique and CRISPR does exactly those kinds of changes. Tiny tweaks to microscopic DNA with potentially life-saving benefits. From crops that thrive in rising temperatures, more nutritious animal products, to bacteria that breaks down plastic in weeks instead of centuries. Scientists like Andrew Allen see gene technology as our best chance against global warming. I think New Zealand needs to be, in the future, cleaner and greener. I totally agree with that image. But with climate change, it's going to be brown, you know, a wasteland, if we don't fight back. And fight, fighting back on climate change requires technology. Gene editing is revolutionary for plant biology. We can go in and make slight new variants of key genes, and then the, the resulting plant is better coping with climate change. It could be higher nutrition, all sorts of new features. That argument about its risk versus safety is so tiny compared to what we face uh, with global warming. Other countries are harnessing gene technology and we're importing their innovations. From the insulin used to fight diabetes, to the enzymes used to make most cheeses, to the impossible burger, all made possible through genetic engineering. Now, political pressure is brewing in Parliament. Yeah, I think we do need to have an intelligent conversation uh, based on science and evidence and not based on emotion. What message would you say to a New Zealander who is watching this who says, no, I am proudly GMO free and I don't want any of that in well, the country? I, I just say to you, I hope you're enjoying your soy latte, which has most likely got GM in it. Until now, the government has allowed the GM conversation 
to move on without us. New Zealand is falling further and further behind by the day. There's fish that are now edited in Japan on sale on the market. You can literally walk into a store and buy a fillet of a much improved fish, which has taken much less resources from the environment and still lets us feed everybody. And young gene scientists are turning their backs on Aotearoa so they can work on the global cutting edge. Left behind is exactly where we'll be. We'll watch others um, and we'll learn what we can from them and we'll move at a slow pace and we'll do our best to keep up. It's our job here at Plant Food to do that, but uh, without all of the tools we can't necessarily keep up. But critics argue gene technology over promises and under delivers. I don't think New Zealand has been set back uh, in any way by the very precautionary approach we've taken to genetically modified organisms. The time frames that it takes to develop these technologies, test them and prove them, are not time frames we have. <laughs> we need to act now on what we know will uh, address the problem of climate change. But international advocates like Mark Linus say the science is settled and it's time for Kiwis to catch up. But it's just a matter of image. It's not a matter of science, and there's never any science they can use to justify that. And in fact, it's harmful to the environment that they maintain this, this kind of restrictive regime against, against new science. New Zealand still have this prohibitionary regime on GMOs. It's a bit like saying we weren't going to take the COVID vaccine because that too was genetically engineered. So it's time to, time to get into the 21st century New Zealand. And while GM remains polarising, there's some evidence public opinion is softening. A 2019 Waikato University study found 79% of Kiwis are at least open to supporting gene technologies, but of that number, a majority felt conflicted and very few could define the technology accurately. We'd say to a legislator, a policymaker, revisit the, the area and, and balance the situation based on real risk and not perceived risk. Some of the answers to some of the problems that we've got, that's what we're working on. We're keeping them in a box right now, um, come and talk to us about what they could do. A powerful tool, locked in a box, until our public and our politicians believe it's safe. Finn Hogan with that report coming up.